Thank you for inviting me to the Fine Grain Visual Categorization Workshop at CVPR 2020. My name is Ross Gershik. I'm a research scientist at FAIR. This talk will be about the Elvis dataset, which is a new dataset for large vocabulary instance segmentation. This is joint work with Agram Gupta, who is now a PhD student at Stanford University, and with Peter Dollar. Now, this topic is not exactly about fine grain recognition, but I think it overlaps well in terms of some of the open scientific challenges, and I thank the organizers for the opportunity to present this work to this audience. I'll start by saying that in machine learning, we basically only know how to do one thing. That is, take a giant class balanced data set with a lot of manually curated annotations, and then train a big deep neural network on those annotations. And for many problems, this works well enough to build systems that do useful things in the world. This talk is about one open scientific research challenge that's really close to that one thing that we can do pretty well, but it's also far from being solved. And I think this juxtaposition illustrates that there is something fundamentally missing from our current approaches. And I hope that it will inspire researchers to pursue this problem. So what is this challenge? I think it all starts with naming things. Why do we want to name things? We name things in order to communicate. Obviously, this could be human to human communication. I ask for a wrench and you know exactly what to hand me. But even more so in the future, it will be for human to machine communication. I ask my robot helper for a wrench. It looks at the environment around it, sees the wrench, and then hands it to me. If we expect automated systems to do many things in, this, in the world, they will need to have a vast vocabulary that can cover a wide range of situations. To illustrate this point, we can consider this image in more detail. In fact, we'll play a simple game. First, we'll mark an object in the image that's not already marked. Then we'll name it, and then we'll mark all the instances of it. And then, if there are no more unmarked objects, we're done. Otherwise, we'll repeat this. First, we see a car, because it's the largest, most salient object. Then, a wrench. We mark all the instances of the wrench. Then we see a bag some bolts, an oil spray can, a car door handle, a cell phone, and so on. There are many things in this image, and we might ask an autonomous system about any of them. Our goal in the Elvis project was to provide a data set and benchmark for research on this scenario. We want to take the field of object detection from the world of COCO with its 80 categories into the future where detectors will be able to detect thousands of different object categories. That is, we want to support the task of detecting everything in an image. On the surface, this might appear to be just about increasing the number of classes that a detector outputs. However, it exposes fundamental new research problems, and I'll spend the rest of the talk talking about two of these, benchmarking and data efficient learning. The benchmarking problem is all about how you define the detect everything task in a way that leads to tractable data annotation and fair evaluation. This is incredibly important because evaluation is how our community makes progress. For more insight into this, I recommend reading David Donahoe's 50 Years of Data Science and learning about the common task framework. The second problem is about data efficient learning. When a dataset contains a large number of categories, it will naturally contain frequently occurring categories as well as a long tail of rarely occurring categories. And this is where I see my talk intersecting most with the fine grain recognition community because I think we both face the challenge of how to accurately classify objects that appear in the tail of this distribution. And as we know, if categories have relatively few examples, accuracy of existing systems drops to very low levels. For example, if we reduce the COCO training data to 1,000 images, then AP, or average precision, for this particular detector drops from 36 to just 10. And this is a case in which 90% of the categories still have more than 20 examples. 
which might not even be considered low-shot learning by many people. Let's jump into problem one, benchmarking. In order to make progress on the task of detecting everything, we need a suitable dataset for benchmarking. For that, we have introduced the Elvis Large Vocabulary Instant Segmentation dataset. We released a preview version of it at last year's CVPR, and I'm happy to announce that this week we have released the final version 1.0 of Elvis. Elvis now contains 160,000 annotated images, just over 1,200 categories that were discovered using, object, using the object spotting game that I showed you earlier, and just over 2 million instant segmentations. And due to the object spotting process, the dataset naturally contains a long-tailed distribution of object categories. I refer to this kind of data as big little data it's big because it has a large number of annotated objects. In fact, it has 67% more annotated objects than Coco does. However, it's also little because there are a large number of categories that have relatively few training examples. Now, building Elvis is actually its own research challenge. Elvis is unlike previous detection datasets. I'll claim that Pascal and Coco were relatively easy to build in the sense that the data collection steps were pretty well understood. In particular, they started with a hand-selected set of categories that were chosen prior to image collection. Images were then collected by searching for these selected categories. This process means that categories can be well separated by design. There are few or no ambiguous cases. For example, no one will ever confuse a potted plant with a sofa. This design also means that annotating all instances of the small number of categories, a property that I'll refer to as exhaustive annotation, is easy to do. However, in Elvis, all of these nice properties go away. At the scale of thousands of object categories, the boundaries between categories can get fuzzy. Now, an NLP researcher once told me, the thing that computer vision people don't get is that the entity in the image is not the label. The label is just a referring expression. What this means is that for a given object or entity in an image, there are multiple valid ways to refer to it. That is, the category is a referring expression and therefore an object may easily belong to multiple categories. For example, an object such as a toy deer may be referred to both as a toy and a deer. Cars and trucks are both vehicles, and backpack and rucksack are synonyms. If one were to try to build Elvis the same way that Coco was collected, it would require making a more than 1,000 way forced binary judgment for every object in every image. This is a non-starter because the volume of annotation work is too great and also, due to the multiple referring expression issue, it will undoubtedly lead to many errors and inconsistencies in the annotations where different annotators make different judgment calls about the fuzzy boundaries between categories. We solve this problem by proposing a new way to structure object detection datasets that I'll call a federated dataset, which is not to be confused with federated learning, which is a different concept. A federated dataset is a single dataset that is composed of the union of many smaller datasets. In this figure, the overall dataset D is shown as the union of smaller datasets, one for each category. Now, each category level dataset consists of positive images for that category and negative images for that category. The same image may be shared between multiple datasets. And in fact, these per category datasets typically would heavily intersect each other. This structure will provide sufficient conditions for computing average precision, which is the standard way that object detectors are evaluated. To see that, let's look at the guarantee provided for each category level dataset. So for category C, we have positive images in which all instances of category C are exhaustively labeled. 
And we also have negative images, for which we guarantee that no instances of category C exist. Then there are all of the other images in the dataset D. These images are unknown with respect to category C. The positive and negative sets are sufficient for computing AP for category C. During evaluation, the unknown images play no role in the evaluation for this category. Importantly, on the VAL and test sets, the positive, negative, and unknown membership is hidden, so the detector must assume that all images are labeled with all categories and try its best to output the objects that it thinks it's found. Federated dataset design has two nice properties that make building datasets like Elvis tractable. First, because the category level positive and negative sets can be modest in size, this dramatically reduces the cost of labeling. Second, there is no forced choice when labeling objects. If an annotator cannot tell what label an to apply to an object because it is on the fuzzy boundary between categories, then it can simply be left as unknown without creating a problem for evaluation. To collect this type of federated dataset, we used a custom six-stage annotation process. It starts with the object spotting game I showed you earlier, in which objects are spotted in stage one, and then all instances of spotted objects are labeled in stage two. Then, in stages three and four, we perform instance segmentation and quality verification, going back and forth until all instances have been segmented up to a certain level of quality. In the fifth stage, we check images to make sure that positive images are actually exhaustively annotated. If any case is found with missing annotations, for example, a missing book in this figure, then we flag that so it can be handled properly during evaluation. Finally, we collect a set of negative labeled images for each category. This process results in pairs of images and categories like these shown here. For example, this is an image that contains two beer kegs. They are not the most notable or salient objects in this scene as you would typically find in many previous detection datasets. Another example, here are lanyards holding ID cards, like what we would be wearing if CBPR were a physical meeting this year. And finally, one example to show off the quality of the segmentations that we've collected. We see the fine detail captured in the pineapple segmentations. In fact, all the segmentation quality is very high. We compared segmentation mass quality using two metrics, mask IOU and boundary F measure, between the collected dataset annotations and annotations performed by highly skilled experts using Photoshop. This experiment demonstrates that Elvis has much higher quality segmentations than Coco, and this is particularly true for object boundaries. Now I want to transition to the second problem, which is data efficient learning. After years of making AP high, the Elvis dataset will make AP low again. To recap, Elvis has a large vocabulary of objects that were discovered in images. This process starts from a set of images without knowledge of what categories exist. It discovers the categories, and in doing so, it uncovers a long tail of rare categories. We can visualize this process by looking at how the number of categories increase as more and more images are annotated. As expected, when images are first labeled, a large number of categories are found right away. And as the process continues, this starts to plateau. However, because we keep adding more categories as more images are labeled, this long tail is essentially inescapable. Now, you might try to get around this issue by simply adding more images that contain instances of a category with few examples. However, if you continue to play the game that we outlined earlier, you must also label all of the other objects in the images that you're, that you're adding. And this will simply introduce new rare categories over time. 
To illustrate the challenge posed by Elvis, we can look at what happens when you train a strong baseline detector on it. In this case, I'm using Mask RCNN that has been trained with a two-stage training strategy. In the first stage, it's trained as Mask RCN norm normally would on a standard category balanced dataset like COCO. In the second stage, the network weights are frozen except for the final linear layers that perform classification, box regression, and mask prediction. These layers are further trained using a data resampling strategy. The resampling strategy picks a category uniformly at random, and then an image that contains that category, again uniformly at random. This two-stage training technique has recently been shown to provide a strong baseline for low-shot learning. Now, to evaluate systems on Elvis, we look at overall AP, as well as AP that's broken into three buckets based on the frequency of categories in the training data. We call these AP rare, AP common, and AP frequent. As you can see, for rare categories, average precision is only at about 60% of the AP that's achieved for the frequent object categories indicating that there is still a large gap between performance in these two cases. Meanwhile, compared to the COCO dataset, overall AP is quite low, indicating that the larger set of categories also presents an overall challenge. So in summary, I've covered the new Elvis dataset. We've just released version 1.0, and are looking forward to seeing what the research community is able to do to come up with new techniques to tackle the challenging problem of learning from few examples. And on that note, I want to end by advertising that we'll be holding a challenge at the next COCO workshop at ECCV in August, and we're hoping to see you participate. Thank you.